after the Pac-12 and NCAA tournament, the Eugene Police Department released the graphic report of the alleged assault. Well, it is a story that is making headlines across the country. Three University of Oregon basketball players accused of rape. The district attorney's office is not pressing charges, saying there's a lack of evidence. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Renee McCullough. And I'm Matt Templeman. We have team coverage of tonight's top story, starting with KZI 9 News reporter Nat Wynn, who is here to tell us what happened and more on the DA's decision to not file charges. Nat? Matt and Renee, Dominic Artis, Damian Dotson, and Brandon Austin are the players accused. In the police report, the alleged victim says the three players raped her at the same time, but the district attorney says he won't file charges. According to the report, this all dates back to March 9th, just after Oregon's last regular season game, a win over Arizona. It was that night the alleged victim says that the three players first raped her in a bathroom at a party. The victim says she then took a cab with a three and a fourth person back to Dominic Artis's apartment, where she says she was raped again. In interviews with police contained in the report, Dominic Artis and Damian Dotson both maintained that the sex was consensual. Brandon Austin's lawyer told police the same. In the report, everybody involved agreed that sex happened and stopped when the alleged victim started crying in Artis's bedroom. Whether or not it's a case of rape is a question. Something attorneys say isn't so black and white. It's not a checklist. It, it's, it's an overall careful review. It, it, it is a very, very difficult um, evaluation to do in most cases. In this case, the Lane County District Attorney's Office has decided that, quote, there is insufficient evidence to prove a criminal charge beyond a reasonable doubt. It cited several interviews with the alleged victim and others at the party who saw the woman before and after the group went into the bathroom. It also questioned the victim's report of being intoxicated. Hugh Duvall, a Eugene criminal defense attorney, recently wrote a handbook titled Seven Rules for the College Playground which gives students advice to prevent incidents like this from happening. And he says when it comes to what is sufficient evidence, that gets tricky too. How certain are they and how, how well can they um, describe uh, chronologically what occurred? And if the person, for whatever reason, has difficulty doing that, that can be a problem. Duvall says it's a she said, he said situation and the slightest chink in testimony impacts anyone's credibility. Well, if the complaining witness makes a complaint and alleges something and it turns out that that part of their story can be established as maybe it's something not particularly important but part of what they're saying is not true or not accurate that can be an issue as well the da's office actually released a statement just before the newscast earlier and in that statement they said that there's the decision to no file isn't about whether or not they believe any other side. It's really an analysis of the available evidence and ultimately whether or not what they have would hold up in court. So if any additional evidence becomes available, the case could come back up and could actually turn out to be prosecuted. Mm, so we may not have heard the end of this. Okay, great. Thank you, Natalie. Great report.